Yeah, we got the bottom boys. Okay. Bottom boys, bottom boys, bottom boys, bottom boys. Listen to the bottom boys, bottom boys cast. Bottom boys, bottom boys, bottom boys, bottom boys, bottom boys. Give on the bottom to the bottom to the bottom boys. The bottom boys, bottom boys, it all together. Ah, that was sick. Oh, nice, Rod. Rod bring us in a whole Rod, extra man. octave. Whole Woo. extra octave. Dang. Uh, hi, I am your snake daddy, your cheeseburger princess, your shit poster, Supreme Matt Keck. Alongside me is the light of my life. Paul Flotation Device <laughs> Shield. That, yes, and remember <laughs> that the cushion is a flotation device. And joining us today on The Bottom Boys, our old friend, the OG, none other than Rod Reyes. What's yeah, up, Rod? Rod, just happy to be here. Woo! Hope that's not what the Chiefs are saying tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Uh, so, uh, Rod is one of our fellow comedians here in Kansas City. I mean, I've known Rod for a very long time at this point, over a decade. Follow him on social, at hippest old man. He is probably the hippest old man I know. <laughs> Uh, for sure. Sorry, Paul. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real, 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 real stinker. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a real, a real ornery one, huh? Mm-hmm. real ornery yeah. one. Well, you got to actually be old in order to be the hippest old. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. you're Asian, you're never fully old. <laughs> like, not until you hit the age where the hair, like, you're, one day you're going to have a light switch, right? And your dark black hair will just immediately go straight white. I and think then that you will is, be old. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. But it, it's that not going to happen for Ricky, a long that time. That re- re- happened to Steamboat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just like one day, boom, instantly white. Yeah. It, and you'll mm-hmm. probably be like 70 before that happens. But <laughs> Maybe. But I do have a large head. Yeah, you so. do. So it'll be awesome. So, well, I'm just saying it might take some time. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, it you can, it's, yeah, it's not like yeah, they're not just t- con- conquering Rhode Island here. They're going after Texas. I got a you got that you got that <laughs> n- that Texas size noggin. I thought M- mine's more California, incredibly large, but also kind of long. <laughs> if, if if you look at my head, what do you think? Is this you, is this a, like a? I thought it was a round shape. I think it's pretty round. Round yeah. shape. I yeah. would round? say. Uh huh. Yeah, because I was a, I was at work yesterday. And they told me I had a square head. Hmm. I don't think you do. I'm looking at it now. I think they're getting thrown off maybe by the lines on your haircut or maybe by like the it's squareness really... of your frame. Now, there's of only your one way to find out. You've got to starve and like lose oh, starve. a lot of weight. And if your head remains the same shape, Ooh. then you know what it is. Oh, that's true. Or Ooh. we could go get an MRI and just look <laughs> at the inside of your head. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> I, I, I lived my whole life thinking I had a round head. I think it looks pretty round. Very... I'm going to tell you right now, I think it looks round, but I'm more okay than, with doing some measurements. More than one want. person said square. Well, maybe we throw a level on that bad boy. It was like a blockhead? Yeah, you or can't. What's the. Yeah, you can't be you know, like the guys from Gumby. You remember those, yeah. them shits? <laughs> yeah, I have a uh, level over here. Somewhere. Yeah, let's throw a fucking level on that thing. <laughs> I want to see if it's square. Rod bought us these awesome pastries, uh, and I am just a huge fan of these freaking caramel nut things. I'm sticky buns. Mm-hmm. They have a. I love them so much. <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> which I have a level here, which I'm very surprised because usually, as you know, mm-hmm. when I grew up, I just used a manage jar filled with water. Mm, right. Okay, so. Which is a. I, I'm looking. It is not level. Oh, no, wait. Bro, you might have a square head. You might, <laughs> you no, might have a square just, head. I, I don't know anyone who uses a device to measure the shape of a head that doesn't have <laughs> a racial agenda. <laughs> right. They just want, want to yeah. prove how inferior or That's superior. True. It's not me. Hey, no, you're no. You're the one that mm. said grab a level. Nah. Well, uh, well, but you're... Very good in math. <laughs> <laughs> Your coworkers are the ones talking about this. I still think it's round. I still think it's round. I'm getting myself off the hook for this one. I think it's round as hell. That is a round ass. Head. I was so distraught because I ruined my whole life thinking that I had a round head and well, making fun of my bulbous head. Now I'm gonna have to pay attention. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna look at you from every angle because I, like, I see you all the time. But does that mean I'm dumb from... if I have a square? Because that's like a what blockhead. Yeah, I mean, that's I was the like, idea. Blockhead, but... like, it's square. And I was like, well, yeah, but what's a, so I have a two-dimensional head? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because... yeah. yeah, otherwise it's a cube head. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. So clearly you're not dumb. You know the difference between it being a square head <coughs> and a cube head, so. Yeah. 
So I know that blockhead's at least a misnomer <laughs> if you have a blockhead. You can live with that. Yeah, it made me so. Well, I mean, I was so. But don't I be self conscious. Maybe I had a square a good... chin. Maybe, does it make up that square jaw? You, that square jaw? You you don't quite oh. have a square jaw, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think either of us will ever have square jaws. Yeah. <laughs> <And then> I... <laughs> we should call ourselves the round jaw boys for sure. <laughs> when I went and got this new hair stuff, yeah, because of my head, I was like, maybe I just need new hair stuff. Mm-hmm. I had no clue how to do it. And now it's just, look at this. I kind of like it, though. So do you? Little, yeah, I, I feel like it's a little more like. Don't the, touch it because your hand will get stuck. I won't there. touch. I won't. I won't. I'll keep my hands off. But I feel like the, it, it, here, your the hairs are like allowed to have a mind of their own a little bit, right? Like there's, it's more side, more detailed. Yeah. It's like it's like when you look at the CGI characters and there's more hairs when you go up to 4K. It's like that. Like <laughs> okay. I feel like I feel like your hair's in HD. Oh, wow. It's HD wow. right now. I have HD hair. Uh-huh. Nice. Is it too metrosexual to? Uh... <laughs> Like point out that there are a lot of different hair stuffs, and you should be able to like experiment. If you a little. send somebody yeah. to the store, let's say you're sick, but you want to look good, and you send somebody to the store, you just some hey, get that hair stuff. Mm-hmm. You would say gel, mm-hmm. yeah, mousse, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the brand probably. You got to <laughs> yeah. make sure you get the right stuff. Uh, no, I th- definitely Rod. Nothing's too metrosexual <laughs> on a podcast called The Bottom Boys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> With a giant ass for a logo. Uh, we are we are here. We are moderately Somebody, queer. We'll some, get used to com- it. A <laughs> uh, 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 comedian or uh-huh. a comic uh, just put out a post about she just uh, started selling merch, and it's just a button. Yeah. And it said, not gay, not straight. And then on the bo- upside down, it said, just a bottom. And I was like, that, it doesn't nice. make sense, but it's cool as fuck. I mean, I guess that means no matter what, you're fine with being underneath, right? I don't care who's on top. That's fine. That's fine. Welcome to the bottom. How are the resolutions going, Paul? Uh, well, I started the Duolingo back up again. You did restart? Yeah, I restarted. You're done sexing goats. I'm done sexing goats. Uh-huh. And I, uh, I'm up to um, asking for an apple. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Can you? What, how do you say apple in Spanish? Do you remember? Manzana. Manzana. Ma- yeah. Manzana. I'm not, maybe I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Manzana. Manzana. Yeah. yeah. You don't co- go it's like. A full, it's, yeah. You're, you're Manz- doing the. Manzana. You're doing like the. Z, and we don't. They don't necessarily z as much as us. It's almost a little more s-y, but okay. like a little stronger than an s. Manzana. There you go. Yeah, I felt pretty strong about it. Uh, uh, with all these words I was learning, and then we're over here talking about Spanish. Rod probably like knows fluent Spanish. No, I mean, not quite or a lot fluent, of it. But <laughs> he's like, I know more than way. you. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> if we go to Venezuela, I'm the one most likely to talk his way out of it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to Venezuela. Well, we're making plans. You know, you know, sidebar: I have family there. Yeah, and I had decided that my gift to myself in these closing years is that I was going to go spend time with the people that I love. Yeah. And I have a cousin there that's like a brother. I just love this guy. And so I s- told my sister, I'll go visit her in Mexico. We'll jump a plane. We'll go to Venezuela. I'm talking to the Venezuelan cousin. He's like, dude, you don't want to come here. Oh, dang. Uh, well, they changed things and they made it a lot harder for Americans. We need a visa to go oh. there. And now my sister has actually done a lot of traveling and into South America. And she told me, she said, Rod, you know I'm not a punk when it comes to traveling. But <laughs> when you said Venezuela, I was like, okay, I'll do it if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> But it's just something that really makes you think, do I want to do this? Mm-hmm. And it, it's not a question, oh, I got family there. I'm just going to see my family. They don't want to hear it. So it turns out uh, we're going to do uh, plan B, which is to meet in Aruba. 
Mm. Which, if you look at the map, Ooh. you can almost swim from Venezuela. Yeah, and honestly, anytime you end up in a country that's in uh, the song Kokomo, you're in, you're in the right place. <laughs> I know you're that's... in the right place. <laughs> Whenever you said that, I started going through what's listed in you're the like, Kokomo. Jamaica. Jamaica. Ooh, you know, I want to take, take you to Bermuda. Venezue- Venezuela. <laughs> yeah, not in there. It's not in there. <laughs> Honduras, <laughs> Argentina. <laughs> they skip. I think they just tell you the ones you mean. should visit. And the one, they leave out the ones you should. Yeah, not going right. to. And they're I like, guess. here's a list of beaches I like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so today, hey, we're talking about travel. Let's talk about air travel, right? Oh let's, yeah. Let's talk about air travel. We uh, we were, we, you know, things are going crazy in the skies these days. The turbulence is worse. People aren't putting the wings on right. Planes are fucking disappearing. Yeah. Um, it's the, easy to do. Yeah. You can put those things on backwards. Uh, it's not that hard. It's crazy. Yeah, it, I would think. So. How often are you guys flying? Do you guys fly very much? I fly regularly, but not often. Yeah, fair. That, I think that's no. me, too. I fly regularly. Uh, work flies me a few times throughout the year. I think I probably flew to maybe eight, nine places this year, which I think that's like a good amount for like that's, someone who travels yeah. for work. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. And plus, that's two. Right, you, you go and then you come back. Yeah, Double. and you sometimes it's four if if they don't book me on a good ass flight. Head math. Or if I got to go to Columbus, Ohio, and there's no direct when you fly oh, southwest. Yeah. Come on, yeah, Southwest, but... get it together. <laughs> but you know what? The, the big thing is you hear complaints, and I like uh, following uh, the boat comics. Yeah, you know everybody's working on the boats, uh-huh. and they have to fly in and out of the ports where the boats are departing from. Oh and yeah, it's always like this. This flight was late. I was delayed. This, you know, mm-hmm. it's never like the wing fell off. Or, you, know, <laughs> yeah. you got bigger things to worry about. Yeah, I mean, buddy. <laughs> it's crazy. Like you sit there, they do the routine. I don't listen when they do the routine. <laughs> I've never listened. Oh, to I don't. It. Not even the first. I'm I'm a horrible human being. I didn't even listen the first time. Not in the first one. No, I mean I can, I know that my seat is a flotation device, and I know to put my mask on before someone else's. But mm-hmm. bitch, I was gonna do that anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm selfish. <laughs> I ain't trying to save you before I save me. Well, no, oh, that's for that's for children. You know, you put yours on before the child because you know you're trying to. Fiddle with the child, and uh-huh. you, you pass and then you out. Pass then out. Miles, then you yeah, go. then you're gone. Uh, <laughs> I will say, not entirely safety related, but for me, the worst part of air travel is for sure if I have to do a long flight and I have to use the bathroom. I try my best to never use an airplane bathroom, but let me tell you, that thing is so small. Like, I know there's like, I don't understand the jokes about having sex in this thing. I, I mean, I get it. I, I guess hobbits fly and have sex. Like, all, any, if you're in the Mile High Club, you're a fucking hobbit. You're, way, you're way rich. To go, maybe you're rich. Way you to go short things. king. Uh, yeah, maybe you're rich and you've got a private jet. That's fine. I get that. Sure, a private jet probably has a bed in it. Yeah. Yeah. Poor fucking mm. like, but in a air like commercial airline, that thing I'm shoulder to shoulder trying to take a shit in this thing. Like that's true. It's you like it's like a coat. I uh, see Daryl Hannah and Liam Neeson. There mm-hmm. we go. Ooh. Get them in there. Uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> for real. <laughs> if uh, hobbits had planes, Lord of the Rings would not have been three movies. No, that's true. They could have just <laughs> yeah. they could have just like terrorist attacked Mountain Doom and yeah, just automatically <laughs> fly the plane right into Mountain Doom with the Drop ring. The ring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Precious. <laughs> um so turbulence, let's start with that. It's Ooh. worse these days, right? How, how, that's what they're saying. They're saying turbulence got oh, worse. How does turbulence get it, I mean, then you gotta really, really own and well, how climate we, change. Uh, that's what I think, right? <laughs> because if turbulence is for real worse, that has to be it, right? Right. It's got to be atmospheric pressure. It's, it's got to w- be climate weather conditions. Change. Yeah. Uh, have you flown through storms like in- inclement weather? I have flown through uh, rain. Yeah. And they give you the warning: "Hey, it's gonna get a little it's choppy. gonna get a little bumpy." But uh, I have never ever flown in conditions where i was like i'm gonna die yeah <laughs> I, i've had one that was really bumpy in a storm coming out of new york that i didn't think i was gonna die but there were a couple drops that you know how like your stomach drops on a roller coaster it was definitely doing that and i was just like geez i am would be very okay if this doesn't end up on the hudson river uh 
<laughs> I, I don't need to be a, another Sully person. Like, I'm, I please get through this. The Man. first time I ever flew, I was in sixth grade. Was going to Washington, D.C., and we landed, and all the classmates were freaking out because apparently we had just flown through a thunderstorm. I slept that whole flight. <laughs> My very first plane flight, I slept the whole goddamn thing. And that whole oh, thing, man. But, you know, there's a, there's a reality show uh, on called The Challenge. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you watch The Challenge? I, I have watched The all Challenge. All right, every season... There's at least one, sometimes two bitches that can't swim <laughs> and won't swim. So what is the good? You land and and Sully's like, all you got to do is get off on the wing and then just drop into the water. No, no, the seat is flotation. <laughs> yep. Need the seat. Need that. That's my water wings right there. I'm taking your seat too. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not buoyant. So do you have to swim on that? Show, what the, the challenge? challenge? Challenge, yeah. I mean, it's gonna oh come up. Oh God! Oh. A, I'd be yeah. like, you should know well, too good, before yeah. you join. Like, like yeah. she get on an island or something? It's is no, it's deal? not an island. Okay, but there, there are water challenges, and okay. usually the last challenge oh. you have to swim from shore from wherever they are back to shore. That's why uh, mm. in the, in the traders, which if you're listening to this, listen to our other podcast, oh, yeah. Master Traders. Johnny Bananas and CT were so good at swimming around yeah, in that challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my whole thing was uh, the Meow Meow, whatever his name was. Mm -hmm. meow that, meow. Yeah, he w he was on Big Brother, and he wouldn't swim, and he cost his partner Damn. any chance of winning, and <laughs> she's begging him, "Come on, that's just, a bummer." Uh, uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. That's when you get stuck with the bum in the college. <laughs> like, mow, mow. Drew, Drew and everybody homework. knew that he was going to be like that. And no one wanted to get stuck with him. What yeah, a, I don't blame him. What a bitch. Why do you think his name is Meow Meow? <laughs> he's eating that Meow Mix, baby. He's a scaredy cat. <laughs> <laughs> right. A pussy. But talking about turbulence. Yes, turbulence. I had, because so, I went and got my phone because I said it over there, but. And I cannot find it here, but uh, I think it's just Thursday. Mm -hmm. They uh, a flight. They uh, they hadn't taken off yet, mm -hmm. but they had. Uh, they were getting ready to take off, and then they they kicked a guy off the the plane because he farted. <laughs> Which they turned the plane around. It was absolutely incredible. He had so much flatulence that it increased the turbulence. Uh, I mean, yeah, we got rid of masks at the wrong time. <laughs> if everyone had their masks on, they'd just be thinking they were smelling their own stanky ass breath. This guy's poor ball got screwed. That's a safety device they need. Just put those those air masks. Just flow at all times. Have those on. You I mean, don't have to worry about the the farting guy. I think everybody cheered as he. They took him off the plane. I mean, to be fair, how embarrassing is that to have Jeez. such a stinky ass that people cheer for you to leave? Like, get him out, get him out. I mean, honestly, it's not. It sucks for him. Like, as many airplanes as the doors are flying off of these days, he could have just had one where someone rolled yeah. the window down and it would have been fine. <laughs> now instead, he's gonna be have that world famous stanky anus. Like, uh, how bad could? I, I mean, I'm talking about the stench because stench will will get to me. For sure. But I'm just talking about the pressure in the cabin. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. I think they were. Hey, they, if this cabin's rocking, taxi it, it back to the parking. the cabin pressure because yeah. he released too much you gas. Hit those, those turbulence scales in the deal. Uh -huh. and, yeah. Uh -huh. I like, think the captain came over the deal. Like, there's too much methane we're, in the cabin. We experienced turbulence. And they're like, we're not even off the ground yet. This guy's a legend. This dude's a fucking king. I'm looking this guy up, and I'm going to follow him on everything. <laughs> this is my new god. Uh, I used to have a friend who could fart as many times as he wanted growing up. I, this is going to sound really weird, but it's true. He would get like down in this weird all four position, and you know like how you can like swallow air <laughs> and burp? He could do that with his fucking butthole, and he would just uh, like we would that just was his party trick. Yeah, we would just ah, have man. sleepovers, oh and he would mount up, and we'd just sit there and laugh and count how many farts he could do in a row. <laughs> One time he did like 145. Now these ones didn't stink because he was just like sucking in air somehow with his little butt, <laughs> with a little beehole and putting it back out. But man, it was hilarious and incredible. 
wish I had that much control. That's, of my that's my boy B-hole. Brad. I won't give his last name, but that's my boy Brad. Uh, if he listens or sees this, he's gonna know I'm talking about his rancid b hole. <laughs> well, it, I, I just, I, I keep thinking about regulations and mm-hmm. and and how some of them are unnecessary and it's above my pay grade and not my job description sure. to figure out which are useful and which aren't. But every time there's we... an American accident, an American tragedy of any kind, the death toll makes people in China laugh. It does. You know, because they're like, ha! <laughs> people yeah that's nothing you know we it's just yeah and it's the regulations that keep it that way well it's you know it's interesting because it feels like any time a big thing happens with the trains with the planes whatever there's almost like an immediate people go well this happened because we had this regulation and we can point directly to who repealed that regulation and it's like man yeah i mean i remember with the trains they're like yeah they repealed all the regulations about how much uh toxic chemicals we can fly around boom next thing you know we start having airborne toxic events all over the fucking country uh and now we're looking at airplanes yeah the regulations are gone and what wheels are falling off wings are falling off capitalism is not going to spend money they are not forced to so they're not going to protect you regulations are there to protect you i thought paul was going to bring up i think it was a flight out of england yeah where they they canceled the flight because there were bolts missing out of the yeah. Out of the wing, the guy and was you just could looking see. Out and just it. look oh, yeah. outside, and hey, there's no bolts. Yeah, <laughs> coming up. Yeah, I've won- I was on one flight where I could see one of the screws just kind of spinning in its hole, which <laughs> I've seen other people see that before too, and that scared me. I cannot imagine looking out there and all the screws are just gone, and you're just like, oh, <laughs> we're about to take off. This should be normal and fine. <laughs> I know like, it's like that old. Uh, um, Twilight Zone, where William Shatner sees a guy on the wing. Hey, screw the bolts <laughs> while you're out there. He's like, there's nothing on the wing. <laughs> nothing <laughs> in the wing. <laughs> oh, man. When William Shatner had hair. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, probably the first instance of someone writing the fact that we have aliens up there flying around our commercial <laughs> airlines nonstop uh, into a thing. And no one believed it then. And they still don't listen now. That the aliens are one. here, they told us. <laughs> that was a scary one, yeah. And they're undoing bolts on wings. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's the aliens. What do you think? You think it's the UFOs and the aliens? They're taking us out? Now that we know they're there, they're like, let well, we might as well fuck some shit up. 100%. We're not hiding anymore. 100%. We're not hiding anymore. Well, they kind of are hiding. <laughs> a little. Still. But they're being they're being more petty now. I like that. I'm they're just getting pettiness. braver, I guess. That's true. Ooh, maybe it's like the brave little alien. Yeah, maybe it's the punked of alien TV. Mmm. Yeah, they're like the they're the impractical jokers, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're just mm-hmm. playing. It's just a prank, oh, yeah. bro. The, yeah. the Malaysian airplane disappears, and the aliens are like, "It's just a prank, bro. Just a prank. <laughs> Get over it." Where'd that go, by the way? The Did what? they find it? That Malaysian airplane that disappeared? I don't think oh, so. Oh, well, they? no, they didn't find Well, I know the, I think I, I, when that happened, I looked up like the, uh-huh. the uh, t- t- top 10 things <laughs> that Malaysia's known for. Okay. <laughs> Is disappearing airplanes one of them? No. Oh, well. Planes is not one of them at all. Oh, yeah. That would probably make sense then. Yeah. But, I mean, I think boats are. Mm. They have water. Well, maybe they can get on the boats and find the plane. Also known, uh, uh, also uh, right under is like, is uh, uh, Malaysia uh, cheap was a thing that would that came up on the there. Cheap? Yeah. <laughs> is it cheap to live there? Oh, uh, well, apparently. Hmm. So, I mean, I knew. I guess I knew the Philippines was so like kind of cheap. So they're not known to live for in. planes, yeah, or and they're cheap, I guess. And then so okay, so yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, don't, don't have the money to look mm-hmm. for it. Yeah, so. and you got to fly with a chicken, I think. Oh, really? Probably. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I would do that. I'm more interested now. Yeah. <laughs> do I get a chicken discount no, if I, I carry two chickens? 
Ooh, I don't know. I think they load the chickens. Mm, okay. Because let me tell you, I can handle two cocks. Uh, welcome to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. But if you want to know my real um, conspiracy theory. Yeah, I want to hear it. I don't think Malaysians are real. <laughs> okay, I'm listening. <laughs> I've never I've never really heard about them at all. I've, no, I don't know any Malaysians. You know, I, okay, you're right. I don't know. Do you know any, do you Malaysians? any Malaysians? I around? do not know any Malaysians, but I'm really curious as to how, how they got that name. Since you're studying Spanish. Mal means bad, right? Mal means bad. Bad Asians. Maybe they just got booted. Bad Asians. <laughs> Maybe you're a Malaysian. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you're a Malaysian. I'm a freaking square-headed <laughs> Malaysian. I'm with you. I don't think Malaysia's real. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fake. I think it's. I think someone made it up to compete with the Philippines. They're like, it fell out of the deal. <laughs> I was like, for number one, I know Malaysia doesn't have planes. They have boats. Yeah, so they're, the plane is just, was just to throw our scent off. Mm -hmm. They needed a headline to make Malaysia seem more real. Yep. I'm with you. Yeah, and they only load Prove chickens. us wrong, Malaysia. Prove <laughs> us wrong. Show me Malaysia, and I will show you a guy who doesn't believe you. It's not real. Two Operators guys. are standing by. <laughs> if you're a Malaysian or no one. Please leave a comment. <laughs> Let us know that you're Malaysian. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about your non-existent country. It's yeah. not real. Oh, yeah. Get in the comments, <laughs> Malaysia. Get in the comments. Yeah, I, I, I'm with All Paul. All our Malaysian listeners. I'm with Paul. Malaysia's not real. You know what else isn't real? And this is fully established. You guys can Google it. Finland's fake. Ooh. Finland's not real. Google Finland's not real. You guys will see. I don't even need to pitch that one. I'll, I'll back you up on Malaysia instead because people are... Birds aren't real, by the way, either. Look that oh, up. Yeah. Birds are fake as hell. Well, I know they're fake. Yeah, how could, aren't they how could a bird AI? be real? Yeah, they're all cameras. Yeah. They're all cameras yeah. spying on us. Birds aren't real. So here's, <laughs> here's something that I, that I, I, I think about. Uh Bad news sells. It does. Good news doesn't. Right. There have been at least three serious uh, airline incidents in which nobody died. They were covered during, and now they are absolutely gone. Mm -hmm. well, the plane where the door fell off. Yeah. I think 170 passengers survived. There was a plane that... Caught fire in Japan, mm, dang. and three hundred something passengers survived. And then wow. there was another one, I think, in Germany. So here's the thing: nobody cares about them, but the passengers had to have experienced the entire range of human emotions. They had to right? come to terms, right? Well, oh, yeah. Well, but see, here's the Did thing: Did they get paid you, off at the you end start of that? Some off. Money? You excited you're mm -hmm. you're elated you're going somewhere you, you're you're going on a trip yeah. you're gonna see grandma yeah, yeah you're yeah. so excited and then the next thing you experience is frustration because now you're on the security line got to take your damn like, shoes God off damn shoe bomber mm -hmm. you know you weren't gonna get away with it and then then, then you gotta go the through the teleporter <laughs> and then they grab your dick a little mm -hmm. and then then the then the engine pops on fire and you and then you're like oh my god I, I, I guess I I haven't spoken to you as much as I should have and, and and then the plane goes down and it hits the ground and you realize at that moment that you're you're not dead yet and you think. Well, all right, I might not make it off this plane, but I'm going to do something to make them remember me. I'm going to save the old people and the kids, and mm -hmm. then the emergency doors open. You're like, get out of my way! It's <laughs> Your George me! George Costanza out me, of there. <laughs> and then you get off the plane, you're back on Earth, you kiss the ground, and you're thinking, I'm alive. And I am gonna sue the shit yes. out of this airline. <laughs> yes, yeah. one thousand percent. And I think yeah. you also probably realize, actually, maybe I have spent the right amount of time with you. I was, <laughs> I was just worried. I, we, we, we're fine. <laughs> well, what if there was like one guy that. on the plane that was like, I, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get remembered. And he just takes off his pants and starts jacking it. <laughs> I, that would definitely be found. the that is the wrong move. 
<laughs> that is a way to survive a tragedy and then immediately go to jail forever. <laughs> That's what you're. That's your plan, isn't it? Well, I, well, but I didn't think I was going to live. At the last moment, you know what? What, what are they going to do? Off. What are they going to do? Throw you off? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just needed to crank it one more time, baby. One last time. <laughs> I was trying to build up air pressure. So, <laughs> so I feel like I can't go through a whole podcast about airplanes without talking about uh, where I work. Actually, I work at an office that's in the downtown airport. And so in this airport, it's where the non-commercial flights come in. There are some like elite commercial flights that are like international things, but most of it is private jets. And it's fucking cool. They do not live the same way we do. These people are not taking their fucking pants off at the airport. <laughs> These people can take whatever drugs they want on the plane because they own the plane. Uh, yeah, like Taylor Swift comes into Kansas City. She is for sure flying into right outside my office. I haven't seen her. I'm not going to say I've seen her. I have seen the president. Uh, Biden flew in. While I worked there, uh, Trump flew in while I worked there, Kamala flew in while I worked there, Jill Biden flew in, WWE flew in. Uh, I get to see all the private jets, and let me tell you, they're fucking cool. <laughs> they're so fucking cool. I, I, I don't care. I don't care that Taylor Swift is ruining the planet and causing turbulence for everyone else. Uh, she has a cool plane, and I would fly it too. I can't judge her. If I had that cool plane and I was a super pretty, talented pop star with millions and billions of dollars, I too would fly all around the world. I'm just going to let you know that. I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't <laughs> care. One person gets to be in that position and gets to do that. And you know what? I don't judge her for it. If I had that position, I for sure would do that. Those planes fucking rule. I love you, Taylor. Be my friend. Didn't you say she? <laughs> didn't you say she was like lending it out or something? Uh, most that's, of the time, that's what people say. Is like that people, other people use her plane, and so it's not just her flying it. Mm. And so that's why there's as much like exhaust fumes that they're talking about when they talk about her hurting the planet. Whatever. Fuck the planet's hers anyway, so she can do what she wants with it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what happened to the Malaysians. <laughs> yeah, Taylor Swift happened to them. <laughs> um, I don't know. Is there anything else we want to hit on with planes uh, today? I, I wrote what? Bermuda Triangle down, but I don't have anything to talk about. I just, <laughs> I was, like, I just I was just like, Bermuda Triangle? Is that well, going to come up? Yeah. Hey. If you want to get to the bottom. I know. Yeah, that's yeah. where you go. That's where you go. <laughs> I've been watching a ton of stuff like that's like shipwreck stuff where they like LIDAR the ocean or whatever and like get like find where all the wrecks are. And they're finding all these old planes in, in the Bermuda Triangle area. It's cool. No one's found Amelia Earhart yet, I don't think. They have some ideas, but they don't know if it's for sure. I know. Well, that. Did she crash in the ocean? Yeah, they say they That's say they it say. was Bermuda Triangle area, but I don't believe it. I think they saw. I saw somewhere where they thought they found some pieces. Yeah, the plane that's or what. I, yeah, but... like on a certain island down there. Yeah. yeah, I was. I was. I was watching a thing on that. Shout out to Amelia. That would suck. Yeah. Get, get you wrecked in Bermuda. You're like you know, you're so close to. Uh huh. <laughs> you're so close to home. You're uh, almost like... to Kokomo. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another one in the song. Yeah. Bermuda. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Yeah. Well, I mean, I... is there any? What what about are there any uh safety tips? <laughs> like things you would invent. <laughs> yeah, safety um... tips. Safety tips, yes. I got so many safety <laughs> tips. Uh tip... I just say that things maybe that maybe they need to do. Yeah, uh, for, here's here's my airplane routine. Okay. I fly southwest. I don't like to check a bag. I don't trust nobody. They've gone through my bags before. I'm only checking a bag if it's a long trip. And then it's only my clothes. I ain't putting anything worth nothing in that bag. They're going to dig through that shit. They do it. I know they do. Uh, so I try not to check a bag. I try to stuff as much as I can in my underseat bag. And I have my one overhead bag. And that's it. Now, you got to be smart about your placement. Especially on Southwest where anyone can sit anywhere. Uh you're going to end up sitting next to somebody on a full flight, so you got to make sure you're going to be comfortable. With long legs, sometimes I like an aisle, but I can't do an aisle up front or near the back because the cart's going to be there too much. You're going to get hit. Don't 
if you're on a long flight and you're near the front or back, the aisle, you're going to have to squeeze in every time someone walks to the bathroom and every time the cart comes by. So if you're near the front, near the back, hit a window seat, easy peasy. You want to be the safest? You got to be at the front of the line. Get that exit row. Get the leg room. You got the door. They make sure that you can like help people out. Trust me, most of the people who take that seat couldn't help a motherfucker out of that plane. <laughs> I swear to God, that should be my seat. But regardless, <laughs> uh, and that's that's my move. That's your safety tip. Yep, get in, get out. Your Keep safety tip is uh, keep to yourself. <laughs> people are crazy. Okay. I saw that lady who saw a fake person on an airplane. People at the airports are crazy. The safest thing to do is to not mess with strangers. Your plane's not going down. Statistically, your plane's not going down. Just don't talk to people. That's my safety tip. Do you have any safety tips, Ryan? I have a big safety tip, but this is for the airlines. Hey, you want people like Matt to pay attention to your directions? <laughs> then update that card. That's that true. That same old boring, stupid, poorly illustrated card. That's true. Get one of those codes where you get your phone and you're tapping it on the on the code, and then you see like a fun video with funny Ooh, comics fun giving you ridiculous S- tips like Matt just gave you. So <laughs> When I went international, when I got to fly to Cannes, that's kind of what they do. Because you have the TV screens on the big planes where you get to watch movies. And so I, that, I, I'm a liar. I have watched safety tips on the international flight because I was waiting for my movies to start. And they had like actors and like comedians doing bit. I mean, they still give you the real info, but yeah, they're like doing exactly. a bit. And it was really good. That's, uh, yeah, it's perfect. I love that shit. I, I've never, I never went to the bathroom on an airplane. Uh-huh. Don't, or or do just to experience. Yeah, it. I just hold it in. I just do it. It could be. It sometimes it's nice to poop real high. Well, yeah. Well, sometimes some, I guess if you're on a long enough flight, but I'm never. I don't. I yeah. think I can hold it. But I have been on those those tram things that go when you're mm-hmm. getting. It, it, yeah, yeah. Which are like at the Atlanta airport. Yeah, the, the ones are kind, well, the ones that are kind of like. Uh, where you're just walking, and then they have, oh, like, the escalator yeah, deal. Yeah, are, the escalator sidewalks. Yeah, so you don't mm. have to walk. But then they have a deal that says stay to, like, the right, because mm-hmm. the left is for people that are walking. Are walking. I'm walking here. <laughs> no, why are you walking on the thing? Isn't that for... Oh, no. I'm with... I, I am, you're walking on that I thing? I am 1,000% walking on it. It saves you so much time. It's such it goes a long, faster, way faster, dude. Well, and I, it's so it, it lightens your legs when people take up the whole thing. Oh, I get so mad because I'm rushing to my next port, and that thing will save me time. Do you know what's not faster? What's that? Uh, falling on your ass as you go from this thing that's moving to this thing that's not moving, <laughs> which is the floor, and then you got a big face of that's true blood. No one told you to fall. <laughs> So, yeah, that should have been the tip survival right there. Of the, survival yeah. of the fittest. When you get off that thing, don't fall. Well, I think it does. Just... T- it does kind of warn you as you're coming up. It says you're about to stop. You're about to hit the platform. Yeah, Pay I'm... attention to the platform. I'm not reading the safety things on the plane. <laughs> Why am I reading it, those? It's speaking to you. It says. Well, it. I don't. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You can't here's what we need. <laughs> He's like, maybe Shut they up. should say it Fuck in it. Spanish. Here's what. The, here's what they need. <laughs> just something that'll take hey, you. Hey, sin vergüenza. Paga atención. <laughs> yeah, if they did in Spanish, I could for sure know what's going on. He definitely didn't say apple. He did not say manzana. <laughs> he did not I'll say just get on up. <laughs> If they made a thing that would just take you from when you get there and just take you to. That's true. That'd be safe. Yeah, that's true. Little pods for each person. Ooh, maybe flights to your flight what if you could get like you remember wally where all the fat guys are in the little pods you could each get oh, one of those yeah. and just, they kind of do that sometimes but not like just for fat people but for like people who can't walk very much they put them in the little wheelchairs but or just those golf carts that i see yeah they do have the golf carts too Ooh, that'd be and nice. i never know how to get on one everyone wants one i want one i don't one. know how to get on one uh-huh. let's go let's mario kart through the airport <laughs> that's my safety tip that they should invent i like that easier travel in the airport yeah, so I don't look like an idiot as I fall on my face. Falling. Up. Someone help Paul not fall on this escalator. I think it's my head. <laughs> it's you see, if it was round, you wouldn't fall, but it's unbalanced and, I know. and block shaped. Maybe that's why it's block shaped. Because <laughs> you felt you straightened it out. On your face, okay. Um. Well, honestly, I think uh, you know, we've we've hit the planes. We flew high. We reached our maximum altitude. 
Uh, be safe out there, folks. But remember that, like Rod said earlier, the media is here to hype things up. They want clicks. They want your money. They want your attention. And you're not paying attention to a story about a plane that landed just fine. You're listening to five stories out of tens of thousands of airplanes about crazy things that happen. These are the outliers. It's going to be okay as long as... <laughs> It stays outliers. It's, it's going to not be fine. okay. Yeah, as soon as it stops being, way to travel. that's what they keep saying. <laughs> Unless you're a made-up group of people. Unless you are Malaysian, in which case they will make you disappear because you didn't exist in the first place. Right. <laughs> that's exactly why they did it. I mean, where are their, I don't see families complaining about this. They're all fake. I'm with you. I know. And now there's going to be like a thing about the real family. I'm sorry to any real victims. but yeah. <laughs> I didn't still, say that. Uh, yeah, did. he didn't. Yeah. It was me. I'm the offensive one. It's true. I'm canceled. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, everyone, for listening to another bottom boys please check out our other podcast the master traders if you are watching the traders us season two right now and if you aren't i recommend it it's on peacock it's very good i want to thank rod again for joining us here on the bottom oh, boys always a pleasure always a pleasure uh and man i Jimmy, mean you want to plug <laughs> these pastries i swear rod yeah you want to plug anything no 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 i got shows that i post on uh on facebook as uh what's your facebook you know, What's your... Uh, it's Rod Reyes. Follow Rod Reyes Rod on Facebook. Rod Reyes. Um, at Instagram. Uh, at Rod Reyes 49. Ooh, you got Instagram. I do. Oh, He's the hippest I old man. Oh, yeah. I'm on TikTok. I seen Woo! you on TikTok. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, we got... Our next show is March 8th at the Rhino. Um, we'll have a link for that here sometime soon. Uh, and then, actually, before we go, going back to resolutions, I said early on... This year, when we did our resolution episode, I was going to record a new special this year, and I have set a date, which means I actually have to get out and grind. Uh, April 19th at the Rhino. I'm going to do it. I'm going to record the thing. Uh, so if you can make it out, it'll be a good time. Sweet. Um, other than that, I think that's uh, I'm Your Snake Daddy, I'm Your Cheeseburger. We got uh, movies. Oh, movies. Movie That's right. Review. Oh, if you followed our Christmas movie marathon, uh, we're doing a really fun one. We wanted to extend it, do some other holidays, and we thought, hey, let's do Groundhog Day. And so, obviously, there's one great Groundhog Day movie, so we're doing a Groundhog Day movie <laughs> review as well to, as a little supplement. It's going to be fun. Keep your eyes out for that. Uh, yeah, follow us at Arson Club KC. Follow Rod everywhere. Uh, thank you so much. I'm your snake daddy, your cheeseburger princess, your shit post, your supreme Matt Keck, and alongside me is the light of my life. Paul, bad Asian shield. <laughs> and this is Bottom Boys. <laughs> Ouch.